So in 30 years, I imagine a world where we don't even recognize the materials that make up the things that surround us, whether it's the buildings that we're living in, the cars that we're driving, if we're even driving cars, the aircraft. All of those, th those things are going to be made up of materials that have properties that right now, instinctively, we believe are completely impossible. So, you know, historically, all we've really tried to do is figure out how to shape the materials that we have, you know, how to sort of temper them so that they're reliable and, and, and usable for building things. And we're stuck, we're stuck with the constraints that nature has given us. So we instinctively realize that when something is really strong, it's typically going to be very heavy. And if we overcome that, we have to start thinking about new tricks. We've done it at the macro scale when we build things like the Eiffel Tower, where you can actually create a structure that is not that heavy and yet is incredibly strong. And we can think about how we might imply those basic principles now down at the atomic or the molecular level. So imagine those Eiffel Tower trusses being done in sort of molecules to molecules, where you can now start to control properties of materials that we always thought were impossible to exist in one thing, but by building it at the atomic level, we can actually force them to coexist. And so then imagine a building made of bricks where each individual brick is not only incredibly strong, but could be light as a feather. We have figured out how to do this really through a number of breakthroughs over time, but a lot of things that have been bubbling up in the last couple of years, where both our ability to sort of measure and observe what's going on at the molecular scale and our ability to control these individual um, pieces and put them together has started to become much more precise. And so now we can move from things that are sort of at the atomic or molecular level up to things that are nanoscale particles. And then for the nanoscale particles, we can control them to move together into things that are at sort of a millimeter, millimeter scale size, something grain size, and then up to things where you can just start to see them. And then those things you can see, you put together and you can actually build them into the large scale particles that I think are going to make up our future. Things that are the buildings and the cars and the aircraft um, that will be surrounding us 30 years from now. The government's played a huge role in this by laying out the challenge problems to the scientific community. We've been doing it for the last 50 or 60 years from actually inventing material science as a, as a scientific discipline and moving all the way up to the point where now we have whole communities of people who can work together to answer these kinds of challenges and change the fundamental nature of the material world.